Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today's Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Reiko, who says the TE Lawrence Loadout, aka Lawrence of Arabia. We'll be using the SMLE Lawrence of Arabia edition, which comes with just some really beautiful um, inscribing on the side and some gold highlights. Then we'll be using any revolver. I picked the number three revolver with a nice silver finish. The flare gun as a gadget. Then we'll also be using the binoculars or the trench scope as a gadget. A stick grenade or the standard frag grenade. And then for melee, we'll be using the Jambia knife. And then he says one of the more controversial historical figures from World War I. You could use a little bit of history together with good gameplay for an amazing video. I hope everyone agrees. And he certainly got a lot of upvotes, 542 by the time I captured this. Now aside from this rifle being based on the SMLE, which is one of my favorite guns in the game, it's also got, in my opinion, one of the best looking weapon skins in the game. And it's based off of a real weapon that was given to T.E. Lawrence for from Amir Fiesel. The rifle had been a gift to Amir from Turkey and it was captured at Gallipoli. Lawrence ended up using the rifle for the rest of the war and later presented it to King George V. So just a cool bit of history about the actual gun itself. This isn't just some fantastical weapon skin that DICE came up with. It is based on a real weapon, although I think it, they might have embellished a little bit with some of the gold plating. Now, for those of you who have no idea who T.E. Lawrence was or Lawrence of Arabia, he was a British intelligence officer, at least uh, at the time of World War I, and he was being used as a liaison between him and the, or between the Brits and the Arabs. And uh, he was certainly a key factor in helping British support the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire. And he wrote a book documenting a lot of his war experiences called the seven pillars of wisdom i haven't read it but i would certainly like to and i might do so in the near future um, then they also made a movie about him called lawrence of arabia which is a phenomenal film it holds up incredibly well even by um, modern movie standards certainly worth a watch if uh, you're at all interested in any of the history about world war one the Arab revolt and the fight against the Ottoman Empire. It really is fascinating because the fighting and the scenery or rather the, the environment is so different from what was going on in Europe. Um, it feels in a way kind of like an entirely different war. And some of the guerrilla tactics used by the Bedouin warriors is really fascinating because I mean, these people were out in the middle of the freaking desert. I've actually been to the Sinai Desert and when you're out there, you're just like, how did people live out here? And you might be uh, traveling through the Sinai Desert by car for like 20, 30 minutes and see absolutely nothing. And then you'll see like one person just walking past on their own in the middle of nowhere. And you're thinking like they're 50, maybe 100 miles away from any civilization. And they don't have necessarily a lot of stuff with them. And you're like, how do these people live out here? But there's obviously... Uh, they've been doing it for a long, long time, and uh, the movie kind of touches on that a bit. Gives you a little bit of an insight to the culture. But uh, anyway, I just personally think it's a very, very fascinating aspect of not just World War I, but history in general. Now, to try and keep the scenery a bit more appropriate to the Loda, I picked the Oil of Empires Operations. I actually started off at the very end of a Suez game, so spent most of the time playing on the Sinai Desert map and racking up a ton of kills with this rifle. I, I'll, I've said it so many times, but the SMLE is just such a beast. I like it a lot. Um, and I'm using the iron sights here, using the iridium ones that uh, might look a little bit out of place on this rifle, but I found the three prong um, way of aiming with this gun just to be a little bit too difficult for me to center my, my zoom. I keep aiming at the wrong prong by accident, and this one just helps me aim quickly, um, even though I think the other um, iron sights allow you to be a little bit more precise if you take your time. Now also, if you spend some time in the weapon customization menu, you'll notice you can change the magnification options for your iron sights from uh, just a one times magnification to 1.25 to 1.5 and up to two 
times magnification. I have mine set to two as it allows me to be as precise as I possibly can be with iron sights, which is not quite as, as precise as you could be with say, the sniper variant or the marksman variant of this weapon, which is what I honestly pre prefer in the long run. It allows you to get a few more headshots. And that's actually one thing that kind of annoyed me because by the end of the game, I am just wrecking it kill wise. So way ahead of anybody else on my team. Um, but I know I didn't get a lot of points because so many of the scout classes points are through marksman headshot bonuses. And I wasn't getting as many of those because I was using iron sight. So I was lucky enough or happy enough just to hit my target, um, let alone get a headshot. So because I was missing out on so many of the marksman bonuses that I might be getting with a better scope, um, I felt like I really did miss out on a lot of points. And it's kind of interesting just how many points are tied into the headshot aspect of the game because at the end of the day, if you kill someone, they're dead. They're not going to be harming the enemy team. You've done the exact same job that you would have done had you killed them with a headshot anyway. So uh, the, the game rewards you point-wise a lot more for headshots even though you're contributing the same thing to your team if you kill them with a body shot. So just like if you're capturing a flag and you happen to step off the capture point at the last second and you miss out on the 500 or more points that you get from the flag turning, um, it doesn't resemble how much you're actually helping your team or what you're doing on the battlefield. It's just another weird way that the point system can kind of screw you over or not really represent how good of a player you are. And that's something that's pretty prevalent in Battlefield 1 right now. However, one thing that I do really like about using an iron sight sniper rifle is that it does prevent you from getting too much tunnel vision. A small two times zoom here zooms me in a little bit, but I can see lots of targets that might be moving off to my peripherals. And um, that's just a nice thing to have. You can catch a lot more people trying to sneak up on you or easier to hit targets or stationary targets. People that you might not see quite as much if you're using an actual scope on the weapon. So there's definitely pros and cons to iron sights. I will always prefer the marksman variant of this weapon over an iron sight variant, but it's not to say that you can't do well with the iron sight variant as I was in this game. Now the oil of empires operation is one hell of an operation because the attacking team has to push through three maps with limited reinforcements. And here we are on the last map nearing the very last sector, which is quite honestly, one of the harder sectors to capture in the game because there's three capture points. Um, they're all spread out pretty far from each other. And the last capture point has got very, very little cover. So getting to that capture point can be one of the most difficult things to do in the game if the defensive team is set up. Granted, uh, if you've made it this far, then chances are the defensive team is having a hard enough time stopping you. But I will say that I, I think I contributed pretty well to helping my team hold off this um, really good assault to our final sector. And here I decide to make a run for one of the field guns just because I know there's a lot of enemies pushing up here and it'd be nice to have a nice bit of shield in front of me while I try and stop the assault. So I get two guys right there. The reload on this gun just kills me every time. I mean, it, it takes so long you can't see who's approaching you and from what angles. And I see a guy on my peripherals again uh, sneaking up on me, get out, but uh, I'm not able to finish off the kill there. He kills me with his sidearm. And speaking of sidearms, the number three revolver is certainly not a bad revolver. It got a nice bit of an update in the last patch so it can shoot a bit faster. It's more useful. The damage drop off with the number three is garbage though. So basically it is a two shot kill in close quarters, but as soon as you start to get just barely beyond close quarters, it's gonna drop down a three shot kill, a four shot kill, um, and it's just not worth using at that point because of the rate of fire and the muzzle velocity. So uh, the number three is a fun little close quarters revolver, but if you're looking for something to consistently finish off your kills with uh, sniper shots at uh, a medium range maybe, the number three is going to be very difficult to use. The Mars Automatic has actually ended up being one of the better follow-up pistols in the game. If you just need to do a little bit more damage to somebody, then the Mars Automatic has a great drop-off. Now we made it to the end of the game here and managed to hold them at the last sector, which is again, one of the hardest things to take. I've got 105 kills and 33 deaths, way ahead of anybody else on my team, and still a little bit behind in points. Had I had the Marksman variant of this weapon, I'm sure I would have gotten enough headshots 
to put me on top of that leaderboard. Just something to keep in mind if you're picking your weapons. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your loadout comments down below, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.